This is VLMP2 and this is VLMP Pro. There are two latest heatset insert presses for pressing heatset inserts into 3D printed parts. That gives you a kind of a more durable thread and a more professional finish. The question is, and which we're going to be answering today, what are the differences and similarities between these two designs and therefore which one is right for you? You probably already know that PCBWay offer high quality PCBs, but did you know they also have a 3D printing and CNC manufacturing service? Start by uploading your file to get an instant quote and design for manufacturer feedback. You can choose from a wide range of processes and materials to get just what you need at the quality that you expect. Make your payment and manufacturer lead time is just two days away, keeping you up to pace with many industries such as automotive, medical, dental, aerospace or consumer electronics. Track your orders online and receive your delivery on time and on budget. Get started today with the link in the video description. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this segment of the video. So first things first, let's cover like the general differences, like the overall differences between these two machines, because ultimately they do do the same job. So what makes this different to this? Well, this one's more designed for maybe a small business or prosumer, if you like that word. It's a little bit more durable, it's a little bit more high precision, and therefore a little bit more expensive, but it's also designed or kind of delivered as an all-in-one kit. It's just, you buy the thing, you get everything included, including the soldering iron, including the parts, including the weights, including everything, apart from tools. You have to have your own tools, and you do need to assemble it. But every, in terms of the parts you need, everything is included, there's no decisions, no risks, you get this and it's the same every single time. And then of course we have VLMP2. Now this is more targeted towards the DIY and hobby users and there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, you will need to print your own parts. Printed parts are not included, we don't actually sell them at all. So you will need to print them apart from the grip which you can get in ABS because it matches this design. But other than that, you do need to print your own parts. Secondly, we have a modular purchasing system which means if you have the soldering iron, you don't need to buy a soldering iron. You can, but it's not mandatory. If you want to get the tips for your soldering line that you already have, you can just get the tips. You can just get the hardware kit, you can just get the STLs. If you buy a hardware kit, the STLs are included for free. And of course the assembly manual is always included. So that's actually, I think, freely available in the download section on the product page. So if you just wanna check out the assembly manual, you can do that. So yes, you have to make choices when you get this, which means, of course, if you make the wrong choices, you might not have all the parts you need, which is why we have this one, so that if you're a business user and you don't want to wait, you buy the parts, you get everything, you can't make a mistake. This one, if you've got the time to be flexible, you want to customize, you want to print in your own color variations, as you can see, this one's sort of gold and black, whereas this one is red and black. So that covers the like general differences. Now let's look at some of the specific part differences that make these two machines different. And I think the first thing you'll notice is that this one uses linear rails, which is these two parts front and back, whereas this one uses V-slot wheels. The reason we've done it this way is probably like a few reasons. So firstly, linear rails. They're very, very durable. They're very repeatable. They're slightly more expensive than this option, but they're gonna be the same pretty much every single time. And they last in this application probably pretty much forever. On the other side, you have V-slot wheels. They're very cost effective, they're easy to replace, they're easy to find. However, they do take some adjustment and they may wear out a little bit quicker, although in this application, again, they're pretty low wear, so you probably won't need to, you probably won't find that you ever need to actually replace them. There are a couple of advantages to V-slot wheels in that I think the motion is a little bit nicer because the wheels are kind of not rubbery, but they're delverin, so they're kind of a soft-ish plastic. You get a bit more of a damping motion in the movement, whereas on the linear rails, because it's all steel, everything is much kind of smoother and a little bit faster. It doesn't have any damping effect, so it tends to accelerate more on the way back down. The second difference is that this one uses a metal base, whereas this one uses a 3D printed base. One of the reasons for doing a printed base on this design is that we wanted to avoid any custom parts. So anything that has to get manufactured specifically for my product, I wanted to avoid. Unless, of course, it's 3D printed. So for the base, we wanted something big and wide, so you'd normally have like panels or maybe a PCB material or aluminium, like we've done here. 
But of course that requires some custom manufacture, maybe having to source things yourself or get stuff made locally or contact a friend and all this kind of stuff. And it feels like a barrier to entry, it's additional cost. We're not at a volume where we're gonna get them like mass manufactured. So having printed parts just makes a lot more sense. So that's why we have the printed base for this one. Now you do need a fairly large printer to be able to print this design, but we do have a reduced kind of squeeze down size, which is 170 by 170 millimeters. So that should print that should fit on most 3D printers, excluding of course, obviously like the 120 mil Vorons, but anything down to like Prusa Mini or Bamboo A1 Mini size, Brat Rig, V Minion, should all fit on all of those. The aluminium base here, we've got a couple of reasons for doing this. A, it's of course more durable. Aluminium, if you're having a lot of contact here or you're moving parts over it, or you've got, I don't know, some metal components in your assembly that you're adding printed parts with inserts in somewhere, like in a specific location or stuff like that, this aluminium base overall is just gonna be way more durable, especially thermally. If you like accidentally press this into the base, like you're gonna cool down the tip, but you're ultimately not going to damage the base really at all. Whereas here, you do have to be, of course, a little bit careful. I've printed this out of PLA, so if this hot tip gets too close, it will get a little bit melty. So you just have to bear that in mind when you're doing your assembly, but I've not had an issue. Even if you're pressing an insert directly onto it, you tend to move it out of the way before it actually becomes an issue. The downside, of course, of the metal base is that it's a bespoke part. We've had to have them manufactured specifically for this product. And since we're not selling like millions of them, the cost is reasonably high for a high quality aluminum base. But I think we've tried to optimize the design to not make it too expensive while still being a high performance piece of kit. The next big difference between them is the counterweight. On VLMP Pro, we have this customized, really small size, but still adjustable counterweight. Whereas on VLMP2, it's a much bigger, bulkier design and just uses M8 screws and massive M8 washers as a counterweight. So let's get into reasons. So on this design, I wanted to have a very slim overall design. I didn't want something as bulky as we have here. So that meant I had to make sure that the steel mass was kind of as dense as possible. So that led us to a nice block. We also have some advantages in that because we only support a single soldering iron, we don't have to adjust the mass as much as we do on this. So this required a maximum amount of adjustment and therefore we sacrifice the overall size, whereas this required much less adjustment and therefore we can optimize the size and tidiness a little bit more. So this design obviously ends up a little bit cheaper because it's just mass manufactured washers. This one is considerably more expensive because it's shrunk down, it's much tidier, it's much smaller and neater, and overall a bit of an easier design to customize the weights. The other thing we want to achieve with this design is to keep it extra, extra slim. The reason for that is I want to, at some point, be able to provide these assembled. Obviously, we wouldn't necessarily assemble the soldering iron into the grip, or maybe not the base. So I've tried to make the whole design slim as possible, and you see from that profile, it's very, very slim. The next big difference is that the heat set inserts that are required for the assembly of these two kits are different. On this one, they're pre-installed into the printed parts, so you don't have to do those yourself. They come installed, you just build the thing. In this design, we've integrated it into the assembly process, but you do have to do them yourself. So the way this works is for some of the assembly, we use nuts. This is to the point where we get a functional machine. And at that point, you can install the soldering iron and use the machine even though it's not finished. You then use the half assembled machine to insert the heat set inserts into the remaining parts and then finish the design, or finish the assembly with those heat set inserts. And the last difference, which I've sort of mentioned already, is um, compatibility of soldering irons. VLMP2 is designed to basically use any soldering iron that you want. It's adjustable. We'll go through a separate video on how to customize the grips. The weight is fully adjustable, so you can balance the counterweight specifically for your iron, and you need to make a sort of a thought process on that decision as you buy the kit. Because if you want a soldering iron, it's obviously more effective to buy it at the same time as you get the kit. Whereas with VLMP Pro, only one iron is supported. This one, and only this one. It's a good soldering iron. It has a couple of nice features that make it really, really actually ideal for this application, but it does mean you don't get a choice. So if you wanted to use your own, it probably won't work very well, because the mass won't be right, it's not very adjustable, it's designed to be used with this iron and optimized for that. 
Next, I want to cover some of the similarities. Now, obviously, they are basically the same machine. They do the same job. So that's one. They both have a fully adjustable counterweight, although obviously here you get less adjustment than you do with this. Both have smooth motion, as I've demonstrated. Both have STLs included, so even with this, if you want to print your own spares, you can do that. This, of course, you will need to print all of your own parts. Both have a full step-by-step -step PDF assembly manual, as well as a video assembly manual. So whichever style you prefer, or maybe watching both. Obviously in the video, I can show you more techniques of assembly, whereas in the PDF, it's just a this goes here sort of assembly guide. But we've got a complete breakdown of all the parts you need for every single step. There's loads of different steps to make sure you do every bit in the right order. And in general, it's really, really easy, honestly. Uh, both, of course, have adjustable end stops. They're now toolless on both designs. On VLMP Pro, we have two stops. One for the counterweight at the back. If you just want to have the resting position set differently, you can do that. And then we have the front one, which allows you to obviously set the position that you come down to in a specific place. And of course, completely toolless, so you can change those how you like. The last kind of similarity, I suppose, is that they both have a much more modern design now. But that overall gives you a really nice, tidy looking design. On this one, of course, we've got the kind of smooth, nice and curvy sort of design, whereas this one is a more aggressive and angular aesthetic. So which should you buy? Well, of course, really, that's always up to you. As I mentioned, this one's more targeted at the sort of prosumer or small business level. And this one is targeted to more, more hobby users. But you could use this in a business, especially if you have your own print farm and you want to print your own parts. This is a really great option. If you really don't want any design decisions, you don't want to have to select bits, you just want the whole kit delivered so you can get on with it, then of course VLMP Pro is going to be the right choice for you. If that's not enough information to help you on your purchasing decision and maybe how to choose the different parts of VLMP2, we're going to have a separate buyer's guide video, so make sure you check that out linked below. Check out vector3d.shop of course if you want to get your hands on these kits. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring, so don't forget to check them out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.